is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirt, different type of shirts and logos that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis, I'm going. What is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to y'all with another fun video. I created this list because, as you know, I watch every game and I study every player. And I usually give positive feedback and try to be fair and try to look at it from a player of business and multiple perspectives when I'm giving y'all my analysis. But this is 10 players that either was guys that had high value in high school, high value in college, or got drafted in the first round or even the lottery or even in the top five, top 10 selections. And they're on their way possibly out of the league in the next three to five years. Their roles have shrinking, have shrunk. Not only that, they also in a situation where they're not getting that many minutes, not that much playing time, and they're not being dependable, and they just haven't evolved and adjusted and added to their game. And now young players are going to be able to take their spot as guys going to be more interested in developing the next guy instead of just taking on guys that haven't proven that they can play at a high level in a starting level or even a bench level consistently in the NBA and their spots might get taken. So this list is not in order. It's just 10 personally players that I picked that I like or I liked at one point, but the way it's going in their career, they might not be in the league that much longer or they might bounce around and eventually be out in the next three to five years unless they change or just or find another way to become relevant in the NBA where they reinvent themselves. But other than that, I'm going to name you 10 guys and give you some reason in why they're struggling to have a big impact in the league. Noah Vonley, I think that he had a good chance when he was in New York. Going, getting out of that was bad for him just because the minutes shrunk and his opportunity shrunk. And he just basically became one of the end of the bench guys that very rarely get any play. That doesn't help you. It helps you stay in the NBA another year, but it don't help you long term making the impact. Teams want to see what you bring to the table. They want to see what you do and what you can evolve and add to your game. He hasn't changed or adjusted a lot. He hasn't developed into a great player at all. And teams are now starting to look at Noah Vonley as just another player in the league. He has the length. He has athleticism. He has the speed and the lateral quickness. He just wasn't able to put the fundamentals and the skills and the consistency um, together. And Charlotte gave up on him quick, and he's just been bouncing around the league, and now he's a guy that very rarely gets any opportunity or minutes since he left New York. And that's not good for your career when you're trying to stay in the league. It's bad for your career when you basically at the end of the bench get no clock and teams are not interested in picking you up. He still might stay in the league just because of his body and his potential, but eventually teams are going to try to find the next prospect and give up on the older one. Um, another one, Bruno Caboclo. He's still a guy that's been bouncing all around the league in the G League. We don't really know what he's going to be. We don't really know if teams are going to eventually give up on this guy either. he got the, the size, the athleticism. He just don't have the consistent shooting, the consistent ball handling, not a great playmaker, not a great defender, even though he has the tools to be one. Just wasn't able to put everything else together. He was able to get in the NBA based off talent and potential, but he hasn't realized that, and it, it hurts, especially when teams are getting to the point where they're giving up on you. But other than that, Bruno Caboclo has been a bust. He hasn't played well. And at the end of the day, I really want to see what he's going to bring to the table in the future. Is he going to be able to continue to live off hype and talent and potential, or will he start putting things together and get to a team that really wants to develop him? Either way, either a team going to take a chance on him, or he's going to be playing overseas, which he doesn't want to see, and hopefully he doesn't. But he hasn't made enough improvements to change my mind that he can really be an impact player in his league. And if you're not impacting the game and not getting the minutes, you're most likely going to be out of the league, and that's where you're almost at. Caleb Swanigan, it hasn't worked out for him um, in the NBA. He had potential to be a 
multi-versatile forward that can guard and play multiple positions, add a little bit of floor spacing, and some little bit of playmaking. But he hasn't really been able to get the minutes. He hasn't been able to develop into anything else. His defense went down. His offense just hasn't been able to be consistent. He hasn't been able to give the shooting or the floor spacing. He hasn't been able to get any minutes to make a show the NBA that he has a potential. The only way he stays in the league is teams give him a workout and see what he brings to the table. But other than that, this is another guy that has a lot of things going for him but wasn't able to figure it out in the league. He had opportunities. He had chances. But teams just don't see it, and he just haven't been able to be good enough to stay on the court, which hurts because if you're not on the court, you have less people seeing, less people watching, less people seeing, less people watching, and less people want to take a gamble on you, and his career could be going in the wrong direction as he's getting older. But that's what happened in the league. They take a chance on you, then they pass on you in the future just because they're trying to do develop the next guy. Mario Hazonia, this is a guy that had a whole lot of potential because he had the whole package, being able to shoot off the bounce, shoot off the dribble, shoot the threes off the um, catch, being able to finish around the rim, being able to get out and transition and make long strides and finish. He just wasn't able to find that footing. I feel like a lot of teams gave up on him. They didn't really trust him enough. His decision-making, his playmaking, and his defense wasn't where it needed to be for a team that's winning to win with. And he had a lot of bad habits that he got and never was able to iron out. He has been a bust, and he hasn't lived up to the potential. A lot of people are surprised that Mario Hazonia is still in the league. But other than that, Portland took a gamble on him. He hasn't really shown enough improvements, hasn't really shown development. And that's not good for him because that's a way to get out of the league. He might bounce around for another couple of seasons just because teams are going to want to try him out and see what he can bring to the table, what they can fix, what they can change, and what they can possibly do with them. But once they find out that every team has done that and he really hasn't shown no improvements at all when it comes to playing, that's going to give you another reason for him to possibly out, be out the league also. Dragon Bender been bouncing around since he left Phoenix. Phoenix gave him an opportunity to be that stretch forward. They allowed him to start. They allowed him to play off the ball. They tried to give him the ball. He wasn't able to finish, wasn't able to post up. His jump shot just wasn't falling nowhere on the court. And he was just a guy that was tall. He wasn't rebounding, wasn't protecting the realm, wasn't switching, and wasn't scoring on no areas on the court consistently. And that's a way to be a bust. You have to find a way to be effective. You have to find at least some bread and butter until you can add some more to your game. He hasn't been able to find his footing. He hasn't been able to find the identity. He hasn't even been able to find any go-to moves that can really help him extend his career. The best thing for him is he's still young and he still has a good touch. But if you're not putting the ball in the basket, you're not defending, you're not impacting when you're on the court, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be kind of hard to stay in the league. We will see what happens with him because he went to Golden State and he looked a little bit better. But that's only Golden State. And once Steph, Clay, and Draymond come back, his minutes are going to be gone or he's just going to be off the roster completely. And this was a team that he started to figure it out a little bit with. But if he's gone, we don't know the position he's going to be in. We don't know what team he's going to go to. And that can hurt his career just like it hurt Noah Vonley this season. Alex Lynn, another guy that was a lottery pick. And a lot of people thought that he can be a great player, being able to post up and being big and physical and showing that he can be a double-double type of player. But he didn't show much else. Not a great defender, not a great shooter, and not really even able to post up consistently at a dominant level that you would hope he would deliver. But he has size. And just like Bender, you can't tease size. So teams are going to try him out because he's mobile and he has size that, you, that he's a big guy. And he can play at an okay level. He's not the biggest bust, but he was for him to be picked at the position he was, he is a bust. But he showed that he can be productive. A lot of these players haven't even shown that. At least Alex Lynn showing that he can make some type of impact on the court when he's on the court. But other than that, Alex Lynn hasn't developed. He hasn't really became much of what he was coming out of college. He has improved in a little areas, but no significant improvements, even with major minutes in his last couple stints. He hasn't really been able to show that he really can be a big difference maker on the court. And even on a bad team, he still hasn't put up the numbers that you would think that he would put up. Being on a bad team, getting more touches and more opportunities, the numbers are still not there for him. But he's been a solid player, but not a player that you really want to spend a lot of money on or really trust in the fourth quarter or within big games because he hasn't shown that 
consistently throughout his career. So he's a guy that's going to bounce around a lot and teams are going to try him out. But that ultimately, you go through a lot of these teams and eventually you won't be in the league no more. So we'll see if he can be more productive. We'll see where he goes in the future. But at least he's been a decent center for what he's worth. And he's a guy that you can give two, three to four million and you know what he brings to the table and you know what he can do. So I give him credit on that. Don McCarr, this guy has shown potential every single place that he has played, but he hasn't been able to put it together. I like him. I like what he can do, but he hasn't done it consistently. He hasn't been able to be re a great rebounder, hasn't really been able to use that length to be a great rim protector or the athleticism and that speed, hasn't been able to knock down the jumpers or the threes or even just be a guy that can just put the ball in the basket around the rim. Like he couldn't even, he's not even a great rim runner or finisher when it comes to alley oops, like you think he should with that speed and that length and that slitheriness. But Thon had huge potential. A lot of people liked him. A lot of people thought he can be special. He hasn't lived up to the hype. He left Milwaukee to go to Detroit to get more minutes and he still hasn't delivered. And that's a bust. But that also can let him be out of the league. Malik Monk is a guy that I like. He hasn't been able to get the playing time in Charlotte, hasn't shot the ball well. He had those problems in high school and college. The NBA is more bigger, more tougher. He's smaller and littler. He's just saying he's not strong enough to really fight off these guys consistently each and every night and create a shot. He can be a little um, blind when it comes to passing and playmaking, and he can be really hero ball -y. But at the same time, we knew that coming in, and he hasn't been able to find a fitting in Charlotte. They love him. They like his mentality. They like his confidence. But he hasn't been able to put it all together and become a great player, and they haven't gave him the minutes. They haven't really uh, relied on him as much as we thought when they drafted him, and that could be a bad sign for him in Charlotte. They respect him. They like him. But also, you make these moves to get something for him, or you make some moves to get off of the contract and get something. And that's not a good place because a lot of teams are not going to treat you like Charlotte. They can give you more minutes. They can get you less minutes. And they can just use you as an asset because he's young with potential. But other than that, Malik Monk did not live up to the hype, which is unfortunate. But a lot of these players on the list haven't either. Dennis Smith Jr., a lot of people have already gave up on him. Just to be honest, his shooting has been terrible. His playmaking hasn't been there. His handles has been good, but it hasn't really created enough shots for him to score efficiently. He still hasn't been able to master the mid-range or the three-point shot where teams can respect him. He's been able to get to the basket, but hasn't been a strong finisher or free throw shooter. His playmaking ability hasn't evolved or really made him a better player. He's a guy that's just playing off talent. He's using his athleticism. He's using his speed, and he hasn't been able to do much else. He, and that's unfortunate because this was a guy that people thought was the second overall pick at one point going into college, and then he dropped down to Dallas, and they got rid of him within a year and a half. And now it seems like New York is starting to move away from him too, which isn't a good sign for his career. He still has potential. He's still going to be in the league for a couple more years, but it's looking like it's going in the wrong direction. And that's why I feared about Dennis Smith Jr. And it looks like I might be right like on a lot of these players, but that's not good for Dennis Smith Jr. in his career. And Dante Exum, a lot of people that have huge potential being a potential two-way guy, and a guy that can shoot the three from the catch and shoot, handle the ball, play, make, see over the top of the defense because he's 6'6", and just get to the basket and just make smart passes and, and play making ability is amazing. The problem with Dante Exum is he can't stay healthy. Every time you look around, he's getting an injury or a nagging injury that continues to make him not play. And teams are going to get frustrated. We're paying you a lot of money. You can't play. We're not going to give up assets. We're not going to pay you a lot of money if you can't stay on the court. Plus, when you're on the court, you're back off the court. And you haven't played at a great level anyway when you have been on the court. He looks like a transcendent player sometimes. He looks like one of the players that you want to be a starter. You want to see him do well. It's just he can't stay healthy. And when he's on the court, he's a little too passive not really as aggressive as he was in overseas. And that's unfortunate because you want to put pressure on the defense. You want to keep the defense on their heels. You want to keep them guessing. You want to keep them predicting what you're going to do, which can open up opportunities for you and your teammates. And sometimes he just dribble the ball. Sometimes he gives up the ball. He, he doesn't have that mentality to find and make plays happen. He doesn't have that in him right now in the NBA level. I don't know why it is. Maybe he's not strong enough. Maybe the athleticism keep him away. 
But if you're that big, that long, that tall, you should have an advantage on most point guards each and every night. And if you don't, you can always get them to switch on you. And if he doesn't have that aggression and he doesn't have that pressure on the defense, he's a little predictable. But other than that, I like his size. I like his length. I like his potential as a shooter. I love his playmaking ability. I just don't love that he's injured and haven't been, been able to show his full package because of that. Other than that, injuries are a part of the game. It's unfortunate that we have to say that about him just because he has the world on his back sometimes. But at the same time, if you can't stay healthy, you can't stay healthy. But that's also a way to get out of the league if teams give up on you or they don't believe in you and they're not willing to invest on you because of your past history. It's unfortunate that that's how the game is. But at the end of the day, that's it. Let me know what you guys think about this list. If I miss somebody, if I step on somebody, if I overrate somebody, if I was too hard on somebody, or you just feel like, well, this was a good list, just like the video. If you're new to the channel, like the video. Thanks for the love and support if you did already. Not only that, you can comment. I read every comment. Not only that, check out my Facebook page, analysisplayground.com. Link in the description, comment section below. Also, check out my uh, website, analysisplayground.com. Link in the description, comment section below. You can click the link. It sends you to my Facebook page. It sends you to my website. Thanks for the love and support. The merchandise, like I said at the start of the video is available on my spread shirt and on my facebook page thanks for loving and supporting that but not only that i also want to say if you love basketball i make videos every day i talk about summer league g league anything that come to basketball i also cover a lot of the trade deadline and a lot of the free agency i do season previews i do cover the nba playoffs in the finals and i make videos each and every day i love doing this you guys love watching i love creating and that's the bond right there that we have and that's why i continue to go and i enjoy it so as long as y'all eating it up and even if y'all ain't i'm gonna be making Making them anyway because this is what i love to do so at the end of the day that's all i got to say comment like subscribe and share and thanks for the love and support that you guys have gave me each and every year and i wouldn't be able to continue to do this without y'all but y'all continue to come back and i continue to make content so we good other than that quinn wade basketball analysis i'm signing out and let me know what you guys think about my list in the conversation below <laughs>